Hi guys, in this video we're going to look at partial pressures, mole fractions, how we can calculate partial pressures, the equilibrium constant, Kp, heterogeneous reactions, and finally we'll summarise. It's common to study reactions of mixtures that contain gases, and the gases exert a pressure on the walls of their sealed container. So we can imagine a square container like this box here, and each of the blue particles is a gas molecule. As they bounce off the sides of the container, the container is going to feel a force. And the pressure that we say the container feels is just the force divided by the area that that force is being applied over. So if we wanted the total pressure in this box, then we'd find the force, the total force that was pushing on each of these walls, so the gas would be pushing outwards, and then we'd divide by the surface area of the box. When we think about gases acting in this way, we do not treat the particles as interacting with each other, and this works to a good level of approximation. So if we have two gases in the container, this means, the total pressure is the same as the pressures from each individual gas added together. In other words, the gas just can't see any of the other molecules. So if we had one type of gas that has blue particles, and a different type of gas, shown here with these maroon particles, so gas 2, then the pressure from these, which say could be 15 kilopascals, is just going to be the sum of what the pressures would be if we had each individual gas on its own. So say there was enough molecules of the blue gas to exert a pressure of 8 kilopascals, and enough molecules of the red gas to exert a pressure of 7 kilopascals, this is why it then adds up to our 15 kilopascal total, because 8 plus 7 is 15. We call the pressure that each type of gas exerts on its own, so it's all the same kind, the partial pressure of that gas. And there's many different symbols to denote partial pressures. Say we were thinking about the pressure that carbon dioxide, CO2, exerts on a container. You may see that referred to, the partial pressure, as P for pressure, and then subscript, so small writing, CO2. Or you could see it written as P, and then brackets, and then within the brackets we'd then write CO2. Both of these are just referring to the partial pressures, but from now on in this video and the rest of the course, we're going to use P with the brackets to denote partial pressure, but just remember you could always see P with a subscript of the species in a given question. This same treatment of two gases extends to any number of different gases we want to deal with. So in this example here, we've got a box with four different kinds of gas in it. We'll call the first kind, which is shown by blue particles, gas A, so we would have the partial pressure of A, then there's the orange gas, so that's going to have a partial pressure of what we'll call B for the orange species. If we then call the yellow species that's in the box species C, we'd denote that's partial pressure with P and then a bracket C. And finally we've got our purpley maroon gas which we'll call species D. D, and this is going to have a partial pressure with D in the brackets. If you want to know the total pressure in a box, then the total pressure is just equal to the sum of all of the partial pressures. So we'd just add the partial pressure of A, B, C and D together, and that's going to give us the total pressure in the box. So we've now met partial pressures, and the magnitude of the partial pressure is going to depend on how much of the gas is present. So how do we actually quantify the amount of a reactant in a mixture? You can think about the air all around you as a mixture of gases. It's an example that we're around every day. And although you may not have thought about this before, oxygen, although it's the gas we need to breathe, is not what makes up the majority of the atmosphere. In fact, 78% of the atmosphere is made up from nitrogen, N2, and then only 21% of the atmosphere is made up from oxygen. This leaves about 1% of the atmosphere that's made up from other gases. 
But in chemistry, we don't talk in percentages most of the time when we have a mixture of gases. Instead, we use mole fractions. And the symbol for a mole fraction is X, and then a subscript of whatever the species is. So if we were talking about the mole fraction of a gas A, then it would be X with this lowercase a here. And what mole fractions tell us is the fraction of the mixture that's made up from a particular gas. We calculate it by just taking the number of moles of a substance A, and we divide through by the total number of moles of all the substances that are present. So it gives us the fraction of the substance in moles that's made up from a given gas A. So if we look at a quick example, just to see how going through one of these calculations would work, this example says that a sealed box of air contains 0.14 moles of oxygen, 0.52 moles of nitrogen, and 0.01 moles of other gases. What's the mole fraction of oxygen? So what we do if we want to know the mole fraction of oxygen, which we'll denote with the X and the subscript O2, is we take the number of moles of oxygen, which we're told in the question is 0.14, and then we're going to divide this through by the sum of all of the moles of the total gases. So we need to remember to include the oxygen because this is part of all of the gases that are present. Then we add the number of moles of nitrogen, so 0.52 from the question. And finally, the moles of other gases, so 0.01 moles. And we'll just write the units round this whole sum. So you can either put all of this into your calculator in one go, or you can simplify the bottom before calculating it. So we can write out again, we've got 0.14 moles, and then we're dividing by 0.67 moles. And now if we put this into our calculator and round to two significant figures, you'll see the answer is 0.21 as the mole fraction for the oxygen. So if we were to convert this to percent, it would be 21%, just like the fraction of oxygen in the atmosphere. Now we're going to see how we can relate these two and calculate partial pressures themselves. So the amount of pressure that a gas exerts, as we mentioned in the last video, depends on how much of it is present. Depends actually on how many particles there are to a good approximation. So more particles means more pressure, and that's the main concept you need to remember. The number of moles of gas tells us how many particles there are. Remember that there are 6.02 times 10 to the 23, which is a huge number. It's a 6 with effectively 23 zeros after it. That's how many particles there are in one mole of a substance. We know from the last part of the video that if we want the pressure of a mixture of gases, then all we do is add up the sum of the partial pressures. And this is because the pressure is proportional to the number of particles, and so is the partial pressure. So because all of the partial pressures are directly linked to how many particles of the gas we have, we can write out two expressions for the mole fraction. We've already seen that a mole fraction in the last part of the video is the number of moles of a particular substance divided by the total moles of all of the substance. But because it's directly proportional, we just have to multiply top and bottom by one number, which has no effect, to convert this to the partial pressure of the substance divided by the total pressure of the mixture. Both of these fractions tell us, fractionally, how much of A is present. So we can rearrange these to find the partial pressure of A by multiplying both sides by the total pressure of the mixture. So we can see that the partial pressure is given by the mole fraction times by the total pressure. And this is what you need to remember. The mole fraction tells us the fraction of gas as moles that's present. The partial pressure tells us the fraction of the pressure that's caused by that gas. And because that partial pressure is related to how much of the gas is present, then the fraction of the total gas times by the total pressure is going to give us the partial pressure. We can look through an example of this just to make sure we understand how it works. And we're told that a sealed box of air contains 0.14 moles of oxygen, 
0.52 moles of nitrogen and 0.01 moles of other gases. Then we're told that the total pressure is 140 kilopascals and asked what the partial pressure of the oxygen is. So if we look at our expression for partial pressures, we just need the mole fraction and the total pressure. And in fact, this example uses the same values as the example we looked at in the last part of the video. So if we go back, we can see that when we calculated the mole fraction of oxygen, it was 0.21. So we can carry that forward without doing any further calculation here. We know that the mole fraction of oxygen is equal to 0.21. And then all we're going to do is multiply this mole fraction by the total pressure, which we're told here is 140 kilopascals. So to calculate the partial pressure of the oxygen, which remember has a symbol of a P and then the species in the brackets, we're going to take this mole fraction, which is unitless, because we just divided moles by moles to get it, so it's just a number of 0.21, and we're going to multiply it by the total pressure of 140 kilopascals. And if we put this through our calculator, we get a final answer of 29.4, and the units are still kilopascals because there's no contribution from the mole fraction. So this is how we would calculate the partial pressure of oxygen in the example we're given. Now one of the main uses of partial pressures, now that we know how to calculate them, is to calculate a form of the equilibrium constant. We've met equilibrium constants involving concentrations of solutions, but when we have equilibrium reactions involving gases, we can write our equilibrium expressions in terms of partial pressures rather than concentrations. And if we do this, we get a new type of equilibrium constant, Kp. So if we have a general equilibrium reaction, where we have the numbers of moles of each of the reactants, shown here in the green lowercase letters, and then we have our reactants, which are shown in blue. So in this generic example, we've just shown that as a capital A and a capital B. And finally, we have our products shown in red, just as a capital B, capital C. And this is the usual way to show a general equilibrium. If these were all gaseous particles, then we would find the gas equilibrium constant by taking the partial pressures of the products and raising them to the number of moles that are present for each. So that would be the partial pressure of capital C raised to the power of lowercase c. Same for D, and then we divide through by the partial pressures of the reactants, again, raised to the number of moles we have. So if we wanted to just see how to do this quickly with a worked example, we've got one here. So at equilibrium, the partial pressure of dinitrogen tetroxide, so that's two nitrogen atoms attached to four oxide or oxygen atoms, and we're given the partial pressure of 50 kilopascals. And then we're told the partial pressure of nitrogen dioxide is 68 kilopascals. We're then asked to find the equilibrium constant Kp for the reaction given below, where we have our dinitrogen tetroxide decomposing into nitrogen dioxide. So we can see from our formula above for Kp that we're just going to write that out with the products on the top. So we're going to have the partial pressure of the NO2 gas. And because we have two moles of it here, we're going to raise that to the power of two. And then we're going to divide through by the partial pressure of the reactant side. So that's just gonna be dividing through by the partial pressure of N2O4. And then in this example, this is gonna be our expression for Kp. So we can just plug in the numbers. We're given the numbers we need in the question, and so the partial pressure of the nitrogen dioxide, the product, is 68 kilopascals. So we're going to do 68 kilopascals squared, so we're going to multiply this by itself. And then we're going to divide through by the partial pressure of the dinitrogen tetroxide, which is 50 kilopascals. So then we'll think about the units first. If we were to write out the top of this expression, we would have 68 kilopascals, so just thinking about the units, times by 68 kilopascals, and then we're dividing through 
by kilopascals on the bottom. So one of these will cancel in, as it's a fraction, and the final units of our equilibrium constant in this case are just going to be kilopascals. So then if we put 68 squared divided by 50 into our calculator, we're going to get the final answer of 92.48, but we can just round that to 92.5 kilopascals for our equilibrium constant. So you may have noticed in the examples we just talked about, all of the reactants and products were gases when we calculated Kp. But what do we do if we have a reaction where there's more than one state involved? So we could have solids and gases, or we could have liquids or aqueous solutions and gases. And all we do is alter the Kp expression by not including those solids. So if there are solids in the reaction, we just leave them out of our Kp expression. And the same with pure liquids. We just don't include these and carry on just including the gases in our expression for Kp. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level chemistry resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the Snap Revised smiley face and together let's make A-level chemistry a walk in the park.